Good morning from uh, Rockbrook United Methodist Church. My name is Pat Sorrell. I'll be your worship leader today. And I'm, I'm humbled and grateful and joyful to, to fill that role. So greetings to the Rockbrook community, both, both here and online. And uh, I guess Pastor uh, Corson already uh, kind of went through some of the announcements. Uh, of course, it is Labor Day weekend, and we, uh, we salute all those who have labored. And uh, so let's go ahead and do our first song, our opening hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See You. Yeah. And just as Greg comes up, for those online who didn't hear it, next week we will move to two services here at Rockbrook. So we will be uh, having first service, traditional, uh, light, blended, uh, we don't know what to call it except maybe early service will be at 8.30 next week. And uh, it will be, uh, Barb Riley will return with her uh, newly mended shoulder. We're, we're glad to hear uh, Barb play again. The praise band will sit in about half the time, and that will be about a half hour service, which will then uh, open up 9.30 hour for Sunday school once again. So Sunday school will restart on its usual day, the Sunday after Labor Day, and then our traditional service uh, now back with, we believe, the choir, special music, all of those elements, back at 1045. Uh, we will record the 830 service and eventually move toward live streaming it, but we're not quite there yet. So for those of you watching online, things probably won't change a lot for you. Uh, you'll see Facebook and it may come up a little bit earlier than it has been as we can get about a half hour earlier start getting it posted. Um, and then YouTube to follow sometimes. So um, glad to be taking this next step. Glad that we are making progress. Uh, we pray that we continue to use all we've learned and stay safe even as the COVID numbers look a little less safe than they did a few weeks ago. So uh, pray for us and pray for our energy and uh, pray that this all goes as well as we hope and expect. With God's help, we know it. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I uh, here, am here to represent the SBRC today, and part of the responsibility of the Staff Parish Relations Committee, it often gets lost in the staff piece, and uh, sometimes we need to take a, a, a survey or a, a time to assess the needs of the parish as well. And so we have initiated a survey. Many of you have already taken that. Um, and in our responsibility in, in assessing your, your concerns and your needs, we ask that you fill out that survey uh, sometime here. And we'd like to have that finished up like the week, the Sunday after Labor Day. Um, your SPRC committee consists of Mark Hines, uh, Mary Donham, Joanne Cruz, Bill Lynch, Vance Allred, and Vern Underwood, as well as myself. Your options for filling this out are online, or you can uh, fill out a um, paper copy, which is on the, the table in the back, and leave it at the church office as well, or give it to one of your uh, committee members. And in the next uh, couple of weeks, we'll close that down, start to assess the, the responses, and see what it is that we can do to help meet the needs of our congregation. Thanks for your help, and we look forward to reporting the results.
Please join with me in our opening prayer. O oh God, you have bound us together in this life. Give us grace to understand how our lives depend on the courage, the industry, the honesty, and the integrity of all who labor. May we be mindful of their needs, grateful for their faithfulness, and faithful in our responsibilities to them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you for uh, continuing to support our ministries through the never-ending pandemic. And uh, there are a lot of different ways to give. Uh, you know, you can do it the old-fashioned way like I do. You can put an offering envelope in the back. You can mail a check into the church. You can stop by and give Teresa a check. You can go online, and there's a couple different payment options online. Uh, so please continue uh, to give. Uh, for the offertory prayer, I've got a little uh, a little song I've I discovered. It goes like this. Well, it don't matter where you bury me. I'll be home and I'll be free. It don't matter where my ashes lay. All my tears will be washed away. I thought this little verse, this little song and lyrics really explains our covenant with God, or at least half of the covenant, right? And uh, the covenant is kind of a big word, but it just it means a contract. It's uh, an obligation, a duty, right, that, that people enter into uh, freely. And uh, our covenant with God, you know, uh, requires a really high bar for us. You know, we're, we're asked to feed the poor and to, uh, to go on missions. And uh, all these things take money at the end of the day. And so uh, I ask the, the Rockford community, please continue to give. It's really amazing uh, how giving we are as a community. And uh, I just ask that we continue that, uh, whether it's to fix the organ, or whether it's for our youth, uh, please continue to give. As a community, we are powerful. I know sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but we're very powerful, right? And uh, we can direct our money to our, our ideals and our goals. And so uh, I ask you to honor the covenant that we have with God and to consider uh, giving as you're able today. Uh, next up, we've got the children's message with Julie. Good morning, children of God, and welcome to church. Um, our first hymn talked about opening our eyes and our ears and our mouth, and that kind of has to do with what we talked about last week with being quick to listen and slow to speak. So I hope that you had a good week last week of thinking carefully about what to say and when to say it. I do think though that there is a time when you shouldn't worry about how often or how much or when you talk. And that is when you talk to God. When you talk to God, it might seem a little strange because he's really not there for you to see in person, so it's kind of different than talking normally to people. But if you practice talking to God enough, it will become very easy and something that you like to do. We usually call talking to God prayer, and sometimes people think praying has to be fancy or a certain way, but it's really just talking and saying whatever is on your mind. Now, I hope that you like to talk to God, and I hope you think about it uh, at least once a day. But 
It doesn't matter how often or when, the Bible tells us we should talk to God all the time and that God will listen to us. And how great to know that God will always listen. One of our scriptures today that you'll hear in a little bit comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 71 in the Bible. And I meant to bring a Bible up, but I got distracted. But if you have a Bible and you open it up to the middle, you can try it right now if you have a Bible in front of you or you can find one. It might not work every time. But if you open it up to about the middle, you'll find the book of Psalm. It's one of the largest books in the Bible, 150 chapters, and a lot of those books are talking directly to God about something. The word psalms actually means songs, and a lot of these can be sung, and a lot of these were written by David, who loved to do music. But what were those psalms talking to God about? Well. They're probably not like you would talk to God because they're a little fancier words and so on. But they have some themes that you could talk to God about too. One of the things that a lot of the Psalms do is praise God. That means tell God how wonderful, how marvelous God is. So praise is important. A lot of the Psalms thank God for things, and you know that being thankful is really important, children, right? So we should always tell God thank you for the things that um, we have. Now, a lot of the Psalms actually ask God for things, and that's okay to ask for things. Uh, some of the Psalms, like the one you'll hear today, talks about uh, help me. I'm sad, or I'm in trouble, or I need, I need you. So it's okay to ask for what you need. And sometimes the Psalms ask for wisdom. We've talked about that before. Ask God for uh, wisdom of what to do, and he'll help you be smart. So all of those things are things that you can do when you talk to God too. You don't have to write a fancy book of the Bible. You don't have to have a long prayer. All you have to do is talk. Just like you talk to your friends, talk to your parents, talk to yourself. You might even do that same thing in talking to God. Next week, we're going to start our Sunday school, and we're going to be outside for September, and we're going to call it the Pray Ground. So when you come to the Pray Ground outside, we're going to learn some more about how to talk to God whether it's like Jesus taught us with the Lord's Prayer, or whether it's simple things that you can do and help with each other. We're going to do things called prayer shares, little things that you can share with each other that you want to pray with. We're gonna have prayer partners. We're going to have a prayer bearer for each of you. So come next week and start learning more about how to make praying and talking to God a normal part of your day. Please pray with me. Dear God, we do thank you for listening to us when we pray, when we're sad, thankful, angry, happy, or we need help. You are always there for us. Help us to remember that. Be with our children this week, on their day off tomorrow, at their school, and when we join back together again next week. In Jesus' name we pray. the purple
Thank you, Diana. Please stand if you're able for the reading of the scriptures. The first uh, reading is um, Mrs. Vidlock alluded to is the 71st Psalm. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and the cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope and my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have learned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been like a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and your glory all day long. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent. For my enemies speak concerning me, and those who watch for my life consult together. They say, Pursue and seize that person whom God has forsaken, for there is no one to deliver. O God, do not be far from me. O my God, make haste to help me. The second uh, reading is from the book of Amos, chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. Hear this word that I take up over you in lamentation, O house of Israel. Fallen, no more to rise is made in Israel. Forsaken on her land, with no one to raise her up. For thus says the Lord God, the city that marched out a hundred that marched out a thousand shall have a hundred left, and that which marched out a hundred shall have ten left. For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me and live. But do not seek Bethel, and do not enter into Gilgal, or cross over to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into exile, and Bethel shall come to nothing. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel, and no one will quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood, and bring righteousness to the ground. The one who made the Pleiades and Orion and turns deep darkness into the morning, and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name, who makes destruction flash out against the strong, so that destruction comes upon the fortress. They hate the one who reproves at the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions, and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe, and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore the prudent will keep silent at such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. This is the word of God for the people of God. Okay. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Today's passage from Amos sounds a bit like a random series of quotes, but they have a common theme. The Lord has pronounced judgment on the people. The Lord is ever gracious, willing to avert punishment even when it is thoroughly deserved. But if it is to survive, Israel must seek the Lord and live. In Amos' time, the separate kingdoms of Israel in the north and Judah in the south reached their largest ever territorial expansion. It was known as a time of peace and prosperity historically, that is, prosperity for a few, 
at the expense of many. There was great inequity between the elites and the poor, manipulating debt and credit. Wealthy landowners amassed great land holdings and capital at the expense of families and small landowners, stripping farmers of both their lands and their freedom. Back when the Hebrews entered the Promised Land, the Bible tells us that God wished there never to be permanent lower or upper classes in Israel. Every seven years, debts were to be forgiven, slaves liberated, and the land returned to the families of the ancestors who had held it. But during Amos' time, this, this tribal and family system of land ownership broke down. It had probably broken down well before that, leading to the emergence of a wealthy class who would become rich at the expense of the lower classes. And Amos, a small farmer from the southern kingdom, was called by God to preach to the rulers of the northern kingdom. God warned them that this economic inequity and exploitation would result in retribution from the Lord. Amos proclaimed the day of the Lord, a dark day, when the Lord would let justice roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Amos was one of the first prophets to bring this message from the Lord. And unfortunately, only after a, a couple of years, Amos was banished from the northern kingdom and his prophetic career ended. And then within a few decades, the Lord's punishment for Israel's unjust actions would come come in the form of total military disaster. The mighty kingdom of Assyria invaded Israel, destroyed its cities, and carried the people off into exile. The northern kingdom of Israel was erased from the map for all time. The much smaller kingdom of Judah was left to carry on, at least for a while, as home to the Lord's chosen people. Well, here in the United States, it is Labor Day weekend this week. In our United Methodist Book of Worship, today's passage from Amos is listed as the first suggested scripture for Labor Day. It's a reminder that among our greatest Christian responsibilities is establishing economic and social justice among the people. Labor Day is a time to recall how our mutual lives depend upon one another, upon our talents, our toil, and our faithfulness. When there are people in need, the people called Methodists have, from our earliest days, answered the call to offer aid in the presence and establish justice for the future. John Wesley said that even reading scripture and praying should be postponed at charity's almighty call. When we are to relieve the distress of our neighbor, whether in body or in soul. So in 1908, we Methodists did something quite radical for 1908. We established a social creed. And among other things, it put forth what were then radical ideas, such as equal rights and complete justice for all people in all stations. Protection of workers from dangerous machinery, occupational diseases, injuries, and death. The abolition of child labor. Giving workers one day off per week. Offering living wages in every industry and for the recognition of the golden rule and the mind of Christ as the supreme law of society and the sure remedy for all social ills. Today we also read from another cure from social ills, Psalm 17, which proposes another remedy, stay near to God, trust in the Lord, and the Lord will be your refuge, your deliverer, your rescuer, and your savior. Savior. And as today's oracle from Amos concludes, he tells us to love goodness, make it your friend, reject evil, make it your enemy. Finally, listening to all these prophetic words today, let's close with the words, not from a prophet, but from a prophet's mother, Hannah, the mother of Samuel. 
who prayed, my heart exalts the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth decries my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord. No one besides you. There is no rock like our God. So friends, let us cling to and stand firmly on that rock. There is no one like the Lord. Amen. Let's have a few words of prayer before we begin the great Thanksgiving. We've been watching a documentary on Netflix, my, my first venture really into Netflix. Uh, I know I'm way behind the curve, uh, but I have been watching a, a, dec uh, a documentary this last week. It's a sports documentary called The Least Expected Day. And it's a documentary about a professional bicycling team and it begins with the sports director planning out on a great big board the year, all of the races, especially the major races, when they are, who's going to ride in them, who's going to take the lead, who's going to be in support. Planning out the entire year and then telling everyone, but then you get down to the actual race. We can plan an entire year, we can plan what we intend to do for a three week long bicycle race or a one day long bicycle race but ultimately it comes down to what we learn in cycling is the great things happen on the least expected and so we are here today uh, we have had to, to do the uh, worship team shuffle uh, we have uh, somehow managed to get through it and i would like to thank our, our whole team for coming together in such a great way and doing great things on this least expected day today. Michael, Mark, Julie, Pat, Diane, thank you so much. And the prayers for Tatiana as she is ill today. We pray for our world, we pray for our society, we pray this Labor Day for all who toil and work and all who toil in retirement and all who toil in their yards and everyone all of the labor regardless of what it is that we do let we let us do what we have been called to do with god at our side with god as our helper with god there helping us every step of the way and let us now join together in the great words of prayer that jesus taught us our father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to thank you, Almighty God, creator of our awesome universe. Before the mountains grew or before earth was made, from before time began, and into an infinite future, you alone are God. You created light from darkness. 
You created life from lifelessness. You made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we were in trouble, you helped us out. When we drifted away, you guided us back. When we fell, you lifted us up. You are always there for us. Your love is so amazing and so dependable because you love us so much, we are able to love and care for others. Through all the years, you have sought to bring us closer to you. You have sent us leaders, teachers, and prophets. And so it is today, as you call us to ministries of teaching and learning, we lift up all of our teachers and all of our students here at Rockbrook as they prepare next Sunday to begin Sunday school once again. Let us hear and speak as we learn from one another. And so, with everyone on earth and in heaven, we give thanks to you with our whole hearts. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Wonderful God, when the time was right, you sent us the most special gift of all, the greatest teacher of all, Jesus Christ, our promised Savior. As Jesus grew, he learned more about you and what you wanted him to do, setting an example through us, for us. Through his life and death, it is possible for us to know your great love. Jesus helps us to know about you and how you want us to live. Through Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave us yet another gift, your church. You led us away from slavery to sin and death and made us a new people, reborn through water and the Holy Spirit. On that night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, and he ate the bread. And he told his disciples, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. Again, gave thanks to you. And he shared the cup with his friends, saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Today at this table we do as Christ taught, remembering him and his almighty acts. In union with Christ we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice as we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Awesome God, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts. Make them be for us, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. With the help of your Holy Spirit, show each of us how we can serve you and serve each other. We have faith that you will give us the tools, the strength, and the courage to do what you ask, even when it is hard, as we minister to each other and the whole world in Christ's name, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly table. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I now invite you to the table of Christ, but it is not my invitation to give. It is Jesus' invitation. All are welcome in the United Methodist Church to come to this open table which Christ has set before us. On each side, you will find a table that will have hand sanitizer, and then it will have small plastic cups, and the first tray will be the little host, the wafer, um, which is like a, a little tiny no salt saltine cracker. Uh, take one of those and then please don't put it back in the tray because if you put it back in the tray, the next person will get an empty cup. And that's no fun. <laughs> that's what the bowl at the end of the table is for. It's for the empty cups. So first take 
your bread, and then in the second set of trays, take your juice and then deposit them in the bowls at the end. And then from then, you are dismissed. So I offer you this final blessing. Lord, thank you for being with us today and every day. And as we go forth into what we may find are the least expected days of our lives, may they be filled with unexpected blessings, unexpected mercy, and unexpected encounters with you that will make those days holy and sacred and great. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Number for the communion song is printed wrong. It's 634.